Hi everyone, this is Alfredo from Alfredo Sado Glass in Corona, California. Today we're going to be working on a Porsche Cayman. Uh, this is the vehicle. Um, it does have a rain sensor on the uh, on the windshield. We're on our pre-inspection, we already tested. Everything is working fine. Uh, as you can see, the, the car is prepped, ready to be worked on. And I'm going to get started and show you my technique. I'm going to be using the uh, uh, equalizer viper to remove the uh, windshield um, I did notice this windshield has previously been replaced as you can see it has a universal molding and I guess the glass dropped um, you can see a big gap in between so uh, hopefully I don't find anything uh, worse than than that molding underneath the glass so I'm gonna get started Um, on this one, I will have to remove the interior to plug in the antenna back on there. This one did, did call for a uh, cell phone antenna, so uh, it's one of, one of a kind. There's not so many of these ones that call for that. First, I'm going to remove these little caps right here. Oh, by the way, my son's working with me today. Thank you, son. And I'm going to get started. These little caps, you can't even tell, but yeah, there's little caps right there. And what it has, a 10 millimeter bolt. And then it has this little bracket underneath. I usually get my two fingers, get it in there and pull it out. And for that, I have my little magnet here. <coughs> If you don't remember how it goes, best thing to do is keep it all together like this and place it somewhere where you're gonna remember where it goes. Same thing with the other side. You can see this one looks different. So if you wouldn't uh, separate it, then you would get a little bit confused putting it back on. And now I'm gonna remove the windshield wipers. Has this little opening. I usually just get my finger, put it in there. This one does have a 13 millimeter socket. This one is kind of hard to get to through the outside, so. And it's important to remove these plastic covers. Uh, you always want to check, make sure they're not loose. If they are, you might want to let the customer know. You can see the cap here. I have to be very careful not to force anything. You really don't want to break anything. So what I'm doing, I'm pulling this up and then away from these two clips that clip into the um, cowling. And this right here has a clip right here and right there so they're very easy to drop so I'm gonna be using this little tool right here As you can see it's in an angle it's very useful I always like to take my time so I don't drop things I don't break things so Patience is the key. So that's the upper part from it. And this is the other half. Gotta be really careful, like I mentioned. It's really easy to drop them. 
I have new ones just in case, but it's always best to not drop them. There's this hose right here. I'm gonna be very careful when you're removing the hose. You do have to remove it because it goes under between this, the cowling, so. There you go. And I highly recommend that you have the, um, see this one's too long, so I'm gonna use a smaller one. There's not a lot of space right here. I like to remove the wipers this way. I feel like I don't put a lot of force in it. I'm not bang hitting on the wiper. That's the left, driver's side left. So now you can see that it's loose. Now you have to remove the torque screw that is there. 20 millimeter work it's actually a 25 but a 20 will work just fine as you can see now it's loose now i have to continue removing the bottom have to unplug that there's going to be a little cable right above the uh, cabin filter that is not the easiest to remove so, have to go very, very careful. And this hose right here. Have to remove the hose as well. And then this, have to unplug this here. You can use a little peck tool. There it is, it's loose. This one's very difficult. If you've never done it before, you will spend some time trying to remove it. So now I lowered the uh, hood a little bit. Just to get this pass by here. As you can see, it's kind of tight. And with my other hand, I was lifting it up at the same time. Hold the hood right here, son. Okay. You see how you have to be really careful. It's not that easy to remove this cowling. It takes a little bit to remove it. You want to place it somewhere it's not going to get damaged. It's, the, it's very low to the ground, so I don't put it under the floor, under the vehicle. So now I saw this molding. Since it's universal, I think I'm gonna be able to just pull it out of here. super tight in there at this point I'm looking for possible scratches which unfortunately I already see one right there that's because oh I see quite several them you see them right here 
So I'm gonna point that out to my customer. That was because they used a pipe knife when cutting out the urethane. <laughs> that could potentially create rust right here too right there unfortunately i already see some rust spots right here so i'm going to be treating that right now so that kind of tells me where it's going sir let me show you something you heard you heard so let me let me show you visually so you have an idea. I thought that was pretty good. I'm just sitting over here calm while you're explaining <laughs> it to somebody else. <laughs> you see that scratch right there? Right there. And then they go... Somebody wasn't careful with their pick as they took that out of there, apparently. Yeah, no. No, that was actually cutting out the, um, the urethane. So once we remove the glass, there's a bit of urethane that has to be cut through. Yep. They didn't use the proper tools to remove it. And on this other side, unfortunately, there's a little spot where there's rust. See that right there? That's yep. that's already rust right there. So I'm gonna be treating that for you. Good thing is nothing major. It's something minor, so we'll be able to treat it and you know be safe. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. So we'll get we'll continue on it. If I had known you were gonna open up the hood, I would have finished putting my stereo back. <laughs> Next time, if you ever come back again, we'll have that stereo on there. <laughs> All right. So. what I figure so the glass is loose on some parts I'm guessing they couldn't remove the uh, the ash so they stuffed it they stuffed this windshield in as you can see it's loose down here yep it's only stuff over there that condensation coming up here that you see here that's because it had a leak it had a um, air was coming in so in the mornings that condensation was crawling in and that's why uh, right now we see that condensation it's raining right now outside so it's kind of cold so you see that condensation building up in there so when I remove it we'll find some of that uh, that I'm talking about that um, that leak where the glass didn't bond properly um, I'm going to be using the fiber line to remove the glass. Pass me the little suction cups on, please. With the Viper, it's a big advantage that you're able to use a fiber line or you're able to use the, um, the squire, which I love that fact. Thank you, son. Put this back. Wait, only one side. I'm gonna leave the little suction cup on the inside. Right now, my lines were crossed, and what I did, I just flipped it to the other side. That way, they don't cross. Do you always want to be careful that you don't go through the dash? Go, son. Pull it. Fit it underneath now. So as you can see, it's nicely fitted in there and to finalize tying it down, I'm gonna pull the other end in here. So now I have enough, pull it to put my little suction cup. Right here you can make a little knot for the little suction cup. Then you go through the hole. Then you fold it back. Oops. And there you go. It's there. 
you always want to point this down to where you're cutting Catch me the both dash covers, son, please. So I want to give myself enough line to go around the um, the tool a couple of times. I need the pliers, please. So with the Viper, I'm gonna center it here in the middle. But first, I'm gonna feed my line in through here. So, do you need these two? The dash covers, yes. The, the equalizer. Yep. Okay. And get the white one too, please. So, right here, you make a little knot. And on another video, I'll show you a way that you're going to be able to reuse this a couple of times. Like I said, you want to place this somewhere in the middle. <clears throat> the windshield has a lot of curve. So I'm going to be... Can you pass me the ratchet, son? Yeah. Two. So right here, I'm going to be very careful. where I'm starting my cut. <clears throat> now I'm gonna remove the, um, pass me a little pick tool, please. I'm gonna remove the, oh, never mind, son. Want the curved or the straight one? Hmm? Want the curved or the straight? The curved one. There you go. Put it somewhere safe on top of it. Okay. So I just removed the cover and now this one, slide it down slowly. You don't want to slide it on too much because you can mess up the cable. Has these little legs on the bottom. Put the light right here, son, so you can see. And then it slides up, and that's it. The um, brain sensor is removed. What I like about the uh, Viper that you could feel when you're cutting, if there's ever resistance, you will feel the resistance. Make sure my dash cover is correctly in there. Okay. Time to move the tool. And yeah, so to be more comfortable, I'm gonna go to the other side. Checking, make sure we're recording correctly. So you never want to see red on the section cup. What I'm going to do, I'm going to slide the dash cover as much as I can. Remember that spot where I said, look, I'm doing it with my hand. That spot where there was no bonding whatsoever I'm gonna cut through two cables right here I done it before so I know it cuts right through before it rips anything it cuts through the connector
on this point if you want to use your finger since it's kind of far away you could use your finger to and if not you could get this right here fold it in like that that way you protect the uh, the roof I'm to the point where I could now move my tool bring it back over here every car you position the tool different some you just want to avoid a lot of um curve on their roof so here's my other dash protector i'm sorry my headliner protector okay so i like to be comfortable all the time so i'm going to switch sides i like to have control of the tool at all times i don't want the tool to control me You see the angle of the tool. It's very close to the uh, to the um, ah to the glass, which is a good thing. You want that. At one point right now, this is going to start slide. So now, have to be very careful. Where that bottom line, where that bottom um, line's going through. This is hard plastic, so it actually helps you cut through and not damage anything it slides right through so here's a little bit of resistance so you see this is pulling down so i'm gonna go really slow that's it cut is done If they would have used this tool and used a different tool to remove the urethane, they wouldn't have caused any damage whatsoever to the vehicle. So that's that's one of my goals doing my videos, promoting quality installations. And it could be achieved really easy. Okay, so now I'm going to show you where there was no bonding whatsoever. See this right here? Not only that, to me it looks like a round bead. Even worse, round beads really don't bond properly. If factory always do a V-shaped bead, it did bond on some parts. But like on this part, there was no bonding right here. And then this part, there was no bonding here. That's very unsafe. This could compromise in a car accident. This could be compromised on the structure integrity. This is where the rust is. Like I said, I'm pretty sure they didn't. Oh wow, it's even worse. Actually, it's almost. Fourteen inches of no bonding. You see, this is the uh, with the part where the um, I was just turning the, the tool. 
and it wasn't cutting because there was nothing to cut there was no bonding there so we're gonna fix that this car is gonna be safer now than when it came in so now we're just gonna vacuum some of the debris before we clean out we're gonna try to remove that rust all tr try to treat it before I remove my urethane that way I don't <coughs> get the uh, the bonding surface dirty so it's really good to inspect it if you have a flashlight it help it really helps to see where you see the bare metal it, it shines like right here shining to me uh, gal galvanic corrosion it's really hard to tell when there's corrosion because it turns into uh, powder so it's really hard to find it sometimes see right here it looks pretty major on that rust and I think it's already eating through underneath the urethane so on this spot right here I'm going to remove the urethane so that I could see what's underneath there this marks right here uh, the urethane squeezing out that tells me that they had a hard time sitting the glass. This is pan, this is a pan. This is really pretty much a sanding pan from Equalizer. Uh, as you can see there, the part number. This is really useful to uh, remove the uh, the rust. Pretty good. Give me a drop blanket, the black one. It's on outside going to see how deep this is so this pen is really useful I did first with the brush so you can see the difference that it does can you fix it on the other side please thank you so I'm gonna vacuum here and clean pass me the uh, BTV tool son please so um, I want to see how bad this is right here pass me the trash can son It's sad that these require primer and it's sad that somebody work on this type of car and doesn't even carry primer and don't, don't have any ethics whatsoever to do a quality installation. And I mean, these cars are not cheap. So imagine if there was major rust problems, it would have cost some serious money to repair it. So as you can see right here on this end, it's very close to the body of the vehicle. So when I sharpen this, it cuts really well. Instead of using metal, I'm gonna use plastic to remove this urethane right here that is squeezed out. And it's cutting without creating any scratches to the vehicle. You see, did an awesome job. Pass me the vacuum in this sun on the, the vacuum from this. Vacuum.
I'm trying to come down all the way down to one millimeter so that I could find that uh, high modulus because this does not look like high modulus. See this? This is from that urethane that they use. Pass me a lint free paper towel, son, please. See, once again, I don't want to go too close to the, um, I'm sorry, son? Yes, please. I don't want to scratch. Hopefully there's no scratch already there, but it's better not to cause any more damage than what already is there. A lot of people say, just use a pipe knife to remove it. <laughs> There's already scratches there. To me, it doesn't matter. I, I'm still trying not to create any more damage than what's already there. As you can see down now, it's bare metal. That's what I wanted it to be. That was my goal. This one right here. I haven't worked on this one yet. Wait, I need the vacuum, son, please. Remember, guys, safety glasses at all times. This is fiber, like little fiberglass. You don't want to get this on your eyes. Thank you. Okay, gotta make sure it's nice and clean and that I did a good job on that rust that there was. See, it always helps with the flashlight. I just saw a little spot where I still see rust. And it's very minor, I know, but this could turn into bigger problems pretty soon, pretty quick. Pass me the vacuum again, son, please. Okay. Okay, so now I'm done on this side. I want to remove these little clips. As you can see, they're metal right there. So that's why I like to take it off. Once I remove this, you can use a plastic to remove it, or you can use metal to remove it. See those clips? Yep. So now go to the inside. Where's the flashlight, son? The, go get it. The light, please. Go get it okay. for me. So now, this molding right here, I like to remove it for the same purpose. I'm able to see the clips. I need you to light me up right here, please. Inside. Now, here on the back, it's very important to be careful because you could damage one of them. So the bottom, the back, you could open it like that. And there... I'm going to move the seat back. I moved the seat back as far as I could to get it out of there. Thank you. Uh, 
we go. So there it is. I removed it. Now I have access to the plugs right here. Pass me a little pick tool. There's this little pin where you have to press on to release it. Some German cars you could just pull right and it comes right off. But um, this is an antenna. You don't want to break this. Just press on here, right here. Or from the back, right here. She could see once you know what you're doing, it makes a whole lot of difference. You remove parts without breaking them. You don't break the clips. You do a nice quality job. So, if you need a vehicle done like this, you can contact Alfredo's Auto Glass if you're near Corona or Southern California. Okay, so now we're gonna clean here, inspect a little bit and see if there's any rust, any scratches, which there is. So I'm gonna clean where those scratches are. I'm gonna need the vacuum, son, please. You see this bad one right here? Wow, all the way down. And then you see this little rust spot right here. If you do quality work and you do remove rust, I would highly recommend this pen. So you can see how useful it is. I used to use the brush before, but this saves me a lot of time and it's right on target. But it is well worth it. Okay, pass me. If nobody would have done this vehicle, I would have done a clean cut where you wouldn't even notice that the windshield had been replaced before. That brownish color, it's from the double-sided tape that the molding comes with. So this is where my plastic scraper comes in really handy. There's a purpose of it, so if you remove all this excessive t tape, then it's going to set properly and it's going to do its purpose. Okay, so now final cut here in the bottom hold this on I'm gonna need one more blue towel son please Once again, I'm gonna remove these clips. Look, see, this one's loose. Whoever put the speaker on broke the clips and there's really nothing holding it. The good thing is that I see the clips in there. So I'm gonna be able to put those clips back in there. Get the lights on, please. See, in these cars, I always tell the customer, give me some time because it, it could take a lot longer you see this right here same thing everything's loose and it's not the first one that i encountered that with as you can see i removed the back part first 
And then there's the one clip here. I think it's the only clip that was holding this piece on. See these cables right here? It's from a, it looks like from a speaker. Like one clip left in there, one down here. <laughs> I'm gonna remove the two that are in there and put them back. That way this is not vibrating when the vehicle is moving. See, they couldn't align it properly right here. You can see how it's bent. It grabs right underneath the clip. See, these two you don't use that you don't use it very often, but when you do, you see how helpful it is. Under properly. I'm not kidding you, but the rain sensor, there's not even a rain sensor pad in it. So that's not good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a, a sensor pad on that one. As you can see the glass before we started the job, we prepped it, made sure that everything's uh, correctly, that everything works. Uh, when I say that everything works, I mean <coughs> that these lines, the um, connectors are not ripped. As you can see, this molding sits flush with the um, vehicle. So a good thing to do to know how much primer I'm able to apply. Let's do a set over the um It's not gonna compromise my bonding surface because there's that molding sticking out. Pump it. <clears throat> this is gonna give me an idea how much primer. How close are you? I'm um, just like close here. Yeah, are you on top of the um, molding or your, your molding's down inside? Down inside. Let me see. Hold on. Don't move it. Okay, so that gives me an idea where that molding is to see how much I'm able to. The area where <coughs> on the edge of the pinch well, I'm going um, where the small dauber You don't want to primer too much over the um, The urethane you don't want to put too many coats in between But on this case it's best for me to put some your some primer on a few spots Only where it's needed I'm going right above where the urethane is. Like I said, I still want to bond to urethane, existing urethane that is there. When I wait two minutes, 
and give it a second coat all the way around. This is another great tool from Equalizer here. You cut your V shape to perfection. There you go. How many that long? So there it is, two minutes. Ready to apply the second coat of primer. Remember I was saying that there was no uh, cables? They ripped them off on both ends. You definitely have it because it's it's in the glass, but they they didn't worry about putting them in. <sighs> so you have to remember where the um, rust was, which of course you could see it too. So. a little bit thicker on the primer same thing here on the bottom and please note I'm not doing it on top of the um, your thing very important okay so now two minutes before I could apply my urethane so that gives me time to find a little rain sensor pad okay so now put new gloves I'm gonna get ready to finish the installation the two minutes have passed I'm gonna get ready to apply the urethane It's important to have a V shape and to have the uh, gl the gun at an at a 90 degree angle. The reason is that you have a footprint. See the the gun, the nozzle. It's leaving a perfect footprint of the urethane. All right, so that's done. Now let me get ready to set the glass in. You're in? Is it on top of the car right here? Yeah, a little bit.
Okay, so we were, uh, we just finished finished up doing the glass, <coughs> setting it on the outside. Now I'm gonna apply the, um, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated as you can see. Cause there's not a lot of space to work with. So you have to have that level. You can see some putting myself up a little bit more. Have to keep it level in order for uh, the gel not to spill to the sides. So I usually let it set for a little bit when it's there. <clears throat> and then I reapply a little bit more on top because if you just uh, apply everything at once, it squeezes out. So I let that cure for a little bit. Because you do want it to be on um, above the line, that way it bonds properly. So I'm going to pause my recording for a little bit. Okay, so now that it's cured, I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the car. So the rain sensor's in. And the mirror's on. Back in place. Uh, please know that I did have to wait about three minutes to let that cure. So to have this nicely even, the way we have it now, we have to tape it, clean it, detail it, so it's in place now. So now we're gonna go ahead and put everything back in place. And I'm gonna start by putting the kelling back on here. And then we're gonna move to the inside. I wanna give it a little bit more time for the glue to cure on the inside before we touch the interior right now. So and I get this, get this back on here. Like I said, it's kind of tricky the way this goes in here. Kind of. Not that easy. Okay, I'm gonna put the hood down a little bit. has to come more this way a little bit. Lift it up? No, we can't put both at the same time. One has to go in first. So I'm gonna put the hood on a little bit. There you go. Now it's in place. Same thing with this side. I'm gonna put the hood on a little bit, put that post for the windshield wiper on here. There you go, it's already in. And have to plug this back in. Have to be very careful. The way I do this. There's actually a little guide that guides you where it goes. 
so you have to be very careful with that um, the cables got to make sure your cables are in order see like this one goes through the outside like this before you put the clips I like to put these ones in first the reason is because I have more space to work with here on top just like that There it is. I gotta tell you, this pushes your button sometimes on patience. And of course, you don't want to take this um, and not put it back together correctly. So it's in, just gotta push that, uh, push clip back in there. Now to put this hose, I put my hand through the back and push on it. It's kinda hard to see. Just continuously pushing it will make it go all the way through. Same thing with this hose. There you go. So <clears throat> now everything's back in place. You can see it goes under the side molding. Otherwise, it's gonna be flapping. <clears throat> there it is. Lift up a little bit and then move it to the side. Okay, so now it's everything nicely. I'm gonna put that bolt first, son. Oh. That one right there. So it's always important to remember how this thing goes. So that when you put it back, you put it back in correctly. So I'm gonna push down this. Give it to me, son, please. So I'm gonna hold it down and then tie this 
down. Now it's nicely flush. This is plastic, so you don't want to over tight it. And now this one. If the little round thing doesn't go all the way through, it'll never go down all the way. So there it is. Now time to put the windshield wipers back on here. There you go. As you can see, it's very important to leave everything just the way it was before. <clears throat> That's just how the factory, just how it came out from the factory. As you can see now, this molding is nice and flush along the body line. The rain sensors on there properly. Okay, so now here comes the, the fun part putting the interior back in place. Put it right behind and now I'm gonna clip it together. And this is all tedious work. All this. installation just putting things back in place it's not that easy for somebody that doesn't have any patience you really don't want to do this type of cars here you go especially because everything has to be back in place all back together correctly so, can you light, put light right here for me, son, please? I'm in the phone. Oh, I'm Hello? sorry. There's not a lot of holes, not a whole lot of space here to work with. You can see it's not the easiest thing to do here. Sometimes I want you to come around and light me up okay. over here. See this side is already lined up in there. Now the clips. Make sure I get the clips in the hole. Make sure these cables are incorrectly. Now I can snap this clip in, in place. See now it's not going to be vibrating. As to how it came in. Light me up being here son please. Okay. Just want to make sure the clip. It's in there. Right there. There. Oh. There. Excuse me. 
Excuse me. All right, so I just put this molly in here. I put the other one and the customer came in, so I had to go and take care of that. Uh, so now I'm gonna line in the clips, make sure they're where they're supposed to be going. This one has a little guide, this clip over here. So if you don't align it correctly, It'll never go in place. There you go. Same thing with this one. There you go. As you can see now, everything's flush in there. It's not gonna be rattling. Hold this on right here, please. Same thing with that one. Like I said, it takes a lot to do this type of car and to do it correctly. So, that's it. Everything's back in place. Now it's just a matter of cleaning the glass, vacuuming the vehicle, cleaning the surface, and we have a safe quality installation. on this Porsche Cayman. Thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I hope you picked up a few techniques today on this Porsche. And thank you, thanks again. Thumbs up and subscribe. God bless.